Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Today I'm going to show you very briefly how to set up your own configuration of NeoVim. Now, I'm not going to go very in depth today. I might do make this turn this into a little bit of a series. Next time I'll look into plugins and stuff. Now, I want to start right off the bat by saying I am not a Vim or a NeoVim aficionado. I don't know everything. Um, I wouldn't even consider myself an expert. I'm very much a noob when it comes to Vim. You watch those Vim videos and everybody's just flying through Vim and they know all the key bindings and stuff like that. I'm not that person. Uh, I'm very much probably like anybody's watching this video. I'm just a guy who looked some stuff up on the internet and thought he'd share what he's learned so far because <laughs> I got way more to learn. So the first thing you need to do is install NeoVim. And that's just a... Uh, that's just a... Uh, sudo apt install neovim that's literally all you have to do on ubuntu if you're on arch it's sudo pacman dash capital s neovim neovim is pretty much in all the repositories it's really easy take very long to uh install at all so th the next thing we want to do is we want to cd into the dot config file okay if you do an ls dash a in this basically you'll see all of your config files now if you're not a uh, if you've been using your system for a long time, you probably see more stuff here than what I have. This is just a virtual machine. Uh, or if you use a, a window manager, tiling window managers, a lot of times those have a lot more different config files, and this is where they're stored. So you want to make a directory here, and you want to call nvim. Not, you want very specifically call nvim, not neovim. For whatever reason, it's just nvim, it's not neovim. Okay, and then we want to cd into nvim and that's just an empty directory okay so the next thing we want to do is create a, a general file so make directory now you can't you can just do this you can do touch init dot vim and you could just use that file for everything you could just use that like you would use a, a, a vimrc file and everything would be great. You know, it would work fine like that. Or you could be a touch more organized and do a, put your settings in a general file. Okay. CD general. And that's just an empty file. And we want to create a, a, a configuration file called settings. That oops. Settings. Dot vim. Okay. And then we just want to end vim into settings dot vim. Okay, now we're in NeoVim. We're using the stock configuration file. And we just want to do some, you know, if you've never used vim before, I had to insert. I'm not going to, and nvim still uses vim tutor. So I'm assuming, some basically, uh, I'm assuming that you know at least a little bit of how to use vim. That's basically all I know is a little bit how to use vim. I don't know everything. Um, so just insert the first thing we want to do is I always change the leader key so by default the leader key is the the I guess that's the backslash that's way too far away we want to make a space so insert let G and then map leader and I make sure I learn how to spell equals apostrophes and this is a backslash and then bracket or uh, whatever that is <laughs> space and then parentheses okay and then we want also want to do syntax able oops spelling is hard and we want to set the line numbers so set number relative number okay and then if we get out of escape mode and save this and then do source dollar sign my vim rc wonder why that didn't work why is nothing working today well fine we'll just quit out of, we'll just quit out of this and we'll go in here again why is nothing working today oh you want to run I'm a dumbass. 
you got to source it first. Anyways, we got to get quit out of this. And we got to CD up a level and go to uh, nvim uh, init.vim and source, oops, source. And then uh, we want to. Uh, tilde slash dot home oops dot config uh, nvim slash general slash settings dot vim okay and then w q just w and then source dollar sign my vim rc there we go <laughs> if you skip steps things don't work that's pretty much the way things work okay so now we can go back to the settings and add some more settings so we quit out of that cd into general oops I forgot I'm using bash here not <laughs> and not zsh uh, nvim settings and we're just back here. Okay. We'll add some more stuff here. We want to set the wrapping. So if you're... How you set up your text wrapping is really going to depend on what you do with them. So I'm a writer. So I have something specific for uh, making it so that when you have a, a paragraph of text actually stays together as a paragraph even if it's all, all on one line it looks like it's a, a paragraph where if, if you don't do that it things get wonky so I have set wrap line break no list all right, now some people have no wrap duh that just means it's not gonna wrap text at all it'll just keep going and going and going um, and that's that's not great for writing. So set a wrap line break and no list. Okay, so that takes care of the text wrapping. Right? Mean, we also want to do. I like doing set cursor line and then do this source dollar sign my my vmrc and that'll get you a line um you can well i'll do a separate video on how to theme that line because really that's not all that attractive because a lot of, uh, but actually i can just go through it so if you do if you want to go ahead and theme it real right quick you can just do highlight which is hi uh Cursor line C term e oops equal none C term BG equal gray as you can tell it did not like that C term BG equal gray and then uh, C term foreground equal white that's the text foreground and then these are for GUI versions of them BG equal gray GUI BG <laughs> gotta make sure to spell it right GRY and then GUI foreground equal white okay and you know, if you do this right, source dollar sign my vim rc. That's better. Cool, huh? So there's that, and then um, the next thing we want to do is deal with some splits. So you want to split basically means you can have two. You can have two. Um, Files open side by side. It's basically splitting them. Just how it's, how it looks. Bash RC. 
Okay. Oh, I'm not. I wasn't in the right directory to get that right. But you get to understand. So we just uh, get out of that. Um, yes, I know I could have done that. And the thing about Vim is you can quit in so many different ways. And this is the first way you learn. So getting out of the habit of quit exclamation point is pretty hard. Um, but anyways, I want to talk a little bit about splits. And that means we're going to have to insert mode, which right at the end here. Um, so we want to set split below, split right. Okay? And then we also want to do um, that basically just tells us where uh, what does that do? I'm not actually sure what that does. Split below, split right. All right, so horizontal splits will automatically be below. Vertical splits will automatically be to the right. That just determines where, yeah, that's what I thought I did. Um, it'll automatically set your split position to the right or below. It, otherwise, sometimes they'll go to the top or the left, depending on which file you have active or something. I don't know how it does it default in a def default way. Um, Oh, next thing we want to do uh, before we do any of that stuff, we want to uh, go up here. Oops, already in insert mode. Set t underscore co equal to 56. That allows your co your color schemes and stuff to come through because otherwise, then won't use a 256 color palette. Um, that's just something that you know is default in pretty much everything. Um, no. As you can see, my mouse works in here. I can replace, I can scroll up and down just fine, but I can't put my cursor where I want to put it. Now, sometimes I use my mouse. It's probably um, something that will make me lose my nerd cred to tell you I use the mouse in Vim sometimes, but I do. I can't help it. I just do. So, we want to. Um, Put in here set mouse equals an ICR. That should let me use my mouse whenever I want to. Let's see if I'm right. Oh, that's because I. It'd really help if I was doing this, you know, right all the time. So I should be able to go through and put, yeah, see, now I can go through and put my cursor where I want with my mouse. Now, like I said, that's hypocrisy and, and uh, heresy is probably the word I was looking for there in Vim circles, but sometimes I just want to do that. Anyways, so next, we want to go through and... Set up spaces instead of tabs. So basically, this means it'll instead of if you use a tab, you can only go back and forth a tab at that point. If you set up spaces instead of tabs, so set expand tab and set smart tab. Basically, this allows you to go back spaces instead of tabs so source my oops so now if we do insert and do a tab this will let me go back you know spaces instead of tabs um, that's useful in case you want to remove some you know spaces there or if you want to either the tab was too long or too wide um, so uh, I'm not sure. We also want to make sure we always show the status line. So insert uh, a set last status equal to. Oops. Gotta learn how to make how to spell last status. Oops. Oops, and that's supposed to be a two, not a three. Typing is really hard today, folks. Anyways. And that's just make sure that the status line always shows up. And basically right now, 
you're at a fully functional vimrc file or MeoVim or init file you could be perfectly happy and this would be all you need now in my next video i'll talk a little bit about how uh key bindings work learn i'm gonna set key bindings for switching between splits set key bindings for uh opening up nerd tree after i do some plug in work i guess um, also some uh key bindings to remove the menu bar the toolbar the right scroll hand right hand scroll bar and so on um and then probably uh, that'll be it. But I'll see if I can find. Some. Oh, you want to also to resize splits because the way you resize splits right now is basically dragging, as far as I know. Uh, it, the default is not good. Anyways, that is it for uh, this time. If you uh, liked this video, go ahead and subscribe and like and all that stuff. I can't imagine that anybody actually wants to uh, watch this nonsense, but. What are you going to do? Uh, see you next time. Have a good day.